system as described in the book Creating Sustainable Societies, The Rebirth of Democracy and Local Economies. <laughs> of this town that everyone could contribute. The solutions long-term are going to come from local communities. They're going to come from... <laughs> and people talk about how cooperative, supportive... People are really concerned about your well-being. <laughs> so if we take wasted resources and able to turn them into something productive, we now have reached a sociological goal also. <laughs> Yes, we're back again, and it is an awesome day because we're talking about solutions from around the planet. What? We're not talking about problems? And we're not talking about pandas. Or Harper. Or Harper. Oh, wait a second. Let's talk about Harper for a minute. No, let's not. Okay. Doesn't feel good. (laughs) We're talking about complementary monetary systems. You're tuned into Radio Free Canada. Let's start with this clip, and then we'll get to the official part. This video focuses on the financial system developed by the Principled Societies Project. If we motivate investment using profit, then the financial system can only function if profits can be steadily attained. But this promotes growth for growth's sake, not necessarily for greater well-being and wiser, more efficient use of resources. Such undisciplined growth is impossible to support forever. Eventually, we use too many resources and generate too much waste. Using profit to motivate investment also strongly rewards greed, one of the most destructive of all human characteristics. By rewarding greed, we corrupt individuals, weaken communities, and harm the planet. The Principled Societies Project demonstrates a different financial system, one that does not use profit to motivate investment. It's called the token exchange system. The framework for this system is described in the book Creating Sustainable Societies, The Rebirth of Democracy and Local Economies. Tokens are a local electronic currency managed using an Internet-based software application. The application is one of several in a suite that provides the infrastructure for new financial, economic, and governance systems. The aim of the Principled Societies Project is to develop the suite and implement pilot projects in host cities. The code to run the suite will be made available to the public under an open source license. In a host city, those individuals and businesses who volunteer to participate will form a local membership club called a principled society. Those individuals and businesses who participate should receive tangible economic and social rewards. Individuals who participate receive tokens as a small portion of their salary. Many would receive a raise paid in tokens or an individual might receive tokens through sales if he or she owns a business, even a hobby business. Most of the tokens received could be spent as desired, but a small percentage is earmarked to provide interest-free loans to local businesses that apply for them. Some of these will be principal businesses, which use a new community-centric corporate model that is unique to principled societies. In this type of mandatory crowdfunding, everyone becomes a member of the investment class, and financial power is decentralized. Each member decides which businesses he or she will fund, and because investment is not conducted for profit, funding decisions are based on community concerns. Those businesses believed to bring the greatest benefit to a community would receive the largest share of support. A similar crowdfunding operation is used to generate donations for local schools, nonprofits, and public services. A small percentage of incoming tokens must be used as donations. Again, each member decides which groups he or she will support. By funding schools, nonprofits, and public services, all members take part in building the health of their community. And that's exactly the way that we do it around here. I never knew that there'd be a solution to banksters. Well, you know, that's a complementary system to the capitalist capitalist system, which is working so well. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Jim Flaherty right now is rolling around not sleeping well because we know more than he does. But that's not to be questioned. My dog knows more than he does. Radio Free Canada, we forgot to tell you, I am Darren Howard. I am Robert Nismith. And I am Monica Salmark. We're so glad to have girls in the treehouse today Woo! because we are talking about solutions to the way keep your keeping your head above water is the thing that we do around here for the activist at heart. Let's talk more about a sustainable world. Radio Free Canada. Time is money. An Irish online exchange could provide the answer to the financial crisis. 
Many residents of Clonakilty in Ireland have little money, but they found a way to cash in on their time. Alison Roberts is a chocolate connoisseur. Her homemade confectionery is a specialty in Clonakilty, but instead of selling them for cash, she trades them for people's precious time. One box of chocolates is worth half an hour. She uses a website called Clonakilty Favor Exchange, where goods or services are traded. One favor is equivalent to 15 minutes, and that's what the website relies on. All members offer a special skill, whether it's legal advice, cutting hair, or walking dogs. Everything is valued equally and measured by time. The digital exchange was the brainchild of Bev Cotton. His goal was to show the people of his town that everyone could contribute. The solutions long term are going to come from local communities. They're going to come from people actually putting the effort to get businesses going, or building communities, or looking after each other. Konstantin Gordgiev teaches finance in Dublin. He specializes in alternative economic systems. It also creates an environment in which people who are unemployed and currently on their knees, psychologically, emotionally, and also financially, can get up and engage in a community in a meaningful way. They don't feel that their talents are wasted. Liquidity is short in the community. People have low disposable income. That means, by the way, automatically they have more time. Therefore, they can actually, if you can take time and convert it into meaningful economic interactions, you in effect supplement them the liquidity system which is starved of cash with something else. The Klonakilty Favor Exchange has been running for a year and its members remain enthusiastic. The variety of goods and services is ever-growing and exchanging them saves money. But more than that, many people enjoy the feeling of being a useful part of the community. The Klonakilty Favor Exchange is a system which could be transposed anywhere. A digital exchange for Dublin is already in the works. Wow. And I mean, wow. That's uh, cool. A favor exchange. Yeah, it's kind of like the sharing economy they're working on in France. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, we ran that before. Yeah, where they share cars and services. Yeah. Okay. And, you know, I always, uh, I always look at the Venus Project because they talk about sharing all the time. I've been paying a lot of attention to the Zeitgeist uh, talks and stuff yep. that Peter Joseph's been giving. It's really, I wanted to break it down for some shows when we want to talk about transitions. Yeah, Peter Joseph, Zeitgeist, that's where you want to follow through. Take a look, it's kind of shocking stuff. But the Venus Project talks about sharing all the time. I mean, if you had, like, say, um, you had a jet ski, mm -hmm. it just sits there, okay, and does nothing. Eight months no. of the year. So you could be... You know, renting it out, trading for favors. Why would Why you not? even own one? Okay, a yacht. <laughs> exactly <laughs> the same thing. Why do you need to own it when you only use it once a month? Same yeah. thing with a car. It only it sits 80% of the time. Right. No, I, I take my bike and my scooter all the time. My car's always just sitting there. So, you know, we're, the sharing thing, okay, you're taught to share all the way up until you graduate. And then after that, mine. Mine. And they're getting away from that because that builds communities, and you can see how they're building a community in Ireland. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, this is why I really love working around here. Uh, you got another one? I do. Talking okay. about mutual credit ex exchanges. Hey, and, wait and a second. Uh, now it's a solution. People. I'm loving it. Once again. My name is Francis Ailey. I'm the president of Fourth Corner Exchange. We are a mutual time exchange, uh, mutual credit exchange system. We have over, as of today, 650 members, and about 400 of those are in Bellingham. In a case of mutual credit systems, uh, the rule is the game is, I do something for you, I get a credit, you have a debit. The sum of our two is zero. In a mutual credit system, everyone has an account. This account can go positive, and it can go negative. When Bob repairs Andrew's hotel, Bob receives a credit, and Andrew receives a debit. Bob can then use that credit to buy catering from Christine. Andrew works off his debit by providing lodging for Daniel. When Daniel does dental work for Christine, the credit and debit are cleared. No hard cash was needed, and everyone gained something in the transaction. As more people join the mutual credit clearing circle, this process can become more dynamic. Ultimately, no matter how big the circle gets, the value people contribute should remain equal to the value they take out. When you start trading in fourth corner exchange, many people talk about experiencing shift in consciousness. 
there's not a scarcity of that currency, so there's much less competition. So you end up with a completely different uh, experience, and people talk about how cooperative, supportive, people are really concerned about your well-being. So the primary distinction between money that, that is tight, scarce, limited, comes from them, and money that is free, available, sufficient, and comes from us, is that with one, we are in fear and greed and competition, and with the other, we behave like sensible human beings. We are more generous, we're more comfortable, we're more giving, we're more willing to receive. Community needs to become our safety net, I believe, uh, the way the economy is going. You know, I only thought that everything I did, I'd have to, you know, pay out of my pocket for some way. So now I realize I have these options. So it's, I kind of uh, see it as a relationship based. Mutual credit has also been successfully applied in mainstream business. The commercial barter industry now oversees $30 billion a year in trade. 240,000 businesses in the U.S. alone participate in a barter system. These networks use mutual credit to help businesses make better use of their capacity while saving on their cash expenditures. Well, my name's Dave Wallach. Uh, been involved in the uh, commercial barter business as a member since 1972. I started my own enterprise in 1979. Well, it's actually a process, it's a business process. Simply put, it uh, makes saleable what is unsold, wasted, and ignored in our economy. Excess capacity in business, simply put, is business that they could do, but are not doing. One example would be like a printer. And his, his capacities are press time. So he's got these presses that he's paid a lot of money for, they're sitting on the floor and they're running half the time. He's making a profit doing that, but they're only running half the time. That means he's got a 50% excess capacity. You could buy things that you're presently paying cash for. It could be legal services, it could be printing, it could be automotive repair, dental, medical. Thousands of different items are represented. So it, it makes sense that if they, could, if they could exchange that excess capacity for goods and services they're paying ca cash for, that they would make a profit doing that. Through the use of put, bringing this efficiency into the economy and utilizing what has been wasted and ignored, we bring tremendous efficiencies to the economy. So if we take wasted resources and able to turn them into something productive, we now have reached a sociological goal also. So what we are, we're, we're the ultimate business yeah. ecologist. The ultimate business ecologist. That's awesome. These are all new models of ways of being doing financial business. Can we say Jim Flaherty? Well, I was uh, kind of wondering, like, how does government feel about that? I don't not being able to tax that system. Yeah, well, and they, they actually have issues a huge, with that. Yeah, there are huge issues with that. They've actually said barter exchange. We should, you know, be taxing all barter exchange. They tried to do it. They also tried to tax flea markets. Okay, this is another thing that the conservatives, you How know. How well did that work out for us? Yeah, I know. Yeah, you can see that it's actually happening. Um, uh, so they try to impose systems. We are clever humans. We actually have solutions. Oh, yeah. Stay tuned. We're going to be talking about Cyprus and a little serious things. But please send us your innovations at Radio Free Canada and get a hold of Monica Selmark at, at where? At infoprohealthnow.com. At info at prohealthnow.com. I'm Darren Howard. I'm Robert Nisbet. And I'm Monica Solmark. Make sure you stay tuned because we're going to be talking about some serious stuff, but do it with a smile. Coming up next, it's Cypress. <laughs>